Today marks the beginning of the last chapter for the air-inflated carrier dome roof. Yeah, in just a few weeks, it's going to be deflated and lowered down. The last games were played under that iconic roof this weekend. News Channel Live's Jeff Kulikowski has been helping us mark all of those memories yeah. of all the events that took place yeah. under that famed roof. And Jeff, yeah. uh, did you get up to the Carrier Dome at all this weekend? I, I did, as a matter of fact, not for basketball. Went with the family on Friday night to uh, the lacrosse game. And I'm not usually that guy, but of course, we did get a little selfie action, four of us, the roof in the shot there. I mean, come on, right? And I know they're only replacing placing the roof, but it is about the only one left in the world. A marvel still, so you can only imagine what it was like four decades ago. From the day old Archbold Stadium closed on November 11th, 1978, one could only imagine how this thing they were calling the Dome could change Syracuse forever. Nine News, as we were called at the time, followed the progress of what would become this iconic stadium right from the demolition of Archbold, its own fixture for about seven decades on the SU campus. Then, right through the entire construction of the Dome, just 22 months from that last game at Archbold to inflation of that familiar air-inflated roof. Of course, it wasn't all perfect, as then Channel 9 sports anchor Dave Cohn explained. Worker inexperience and the ferocious winds of early June, which ripped several panels and tore one completely off, have put the project slightly behind schedule. But the first football game was set for September. Sound familiar? And the work had to get done on the dome and in the ticket office. With just three months to go, there were only 15,000 season tickets sold. First of all, at our very best, Archibald, we would draw 12,000 fans. Uh, last, the last season we played here, we averaged a little over 10,000 in terms of season ticket sales. But the tickets got sold and the building was being finished up. Cohen did a series of specials on the dome at the time, explaining to viewers the air pressure needed to support the roof, something he told them you wouldn't get from going through the revolving doors. But it'll be a different story when you exit through the non revolving doors. Now, to give you an example, I'm going to put on this baseball cap, and I think you'll see what I mean. Watch this. When he wasn't bounding across the top of the dome, Cohn was even investigating the dome concessions. Uh, Jim Morgan, why boiled hot dogs in a football stadium? Well, first of all, Dave, we're not going to have any hot dogs in this stadium. We're going to be calling them dome dogs. All right. Well, there were no doubt plenty dome dogs eaten by the sellout crowd of over 50,000 on opening night of the dome, September 20th, 1980. Who said Frank Maloney adheres to boring football? An onside kick by Gary Anderson began the contest. Too bad it backfired on the Orange men. The kick was too short. It'll give the, this city an identity that it needs to sustain itself in the Northeast. If anything could have spoiled Syracuse's big day, it would have been traffic. But the much feared and planned for traffic jams never materialized. You know, I'm confident as we look to the years ahead of this facility, this is just the beginning. And that we can have this facility in our community, and it'll mean a lot to a lot of people. No hot air, but words that have proved prophetic. Jeff Kulikowski, News Channel 9. Wow, that was amazing. We have the entire Dave Cohen specials and more on localesquire.com and our Carrier Dome and the Venera section. It's right on the side of the homepage.